Invitations to Tesla's autonomy event on 1010 have started going out today, and holy crap, we have a lot to discuss. The invitation itself features a graphic, which we're going to dissect in detail, so I highly recommend watching as opposed to listening. We have that graphic on screen now. The event, titled We Robot, so more on that in a moment. Let's actually read the text of the invitation and then get back to dissecting this graphic, which has a huge amount of hidden meaning. Here's a snapshot of the full email invitation including the header graphic. October 10th, 2024, Los Angeles, California. Join us for We Robot, our official unveiling of the future of autonomy. Submit your RS3 before who cares whatever, cool story bro. Interestingly, you must be over 21 to attend. I suspect the alcohol may flow freely. The event officially kicking off at 7 p.m. By the way, folks, remember, don't drink and drive. Oh, wait, you won't need to because it'll be, yeah, you saw that coming, right? Now, Back to this image, there's a lot of meaning. Some will be initially quite obvious to just about everybody, but other stuff, maybe not so much. First of all, we, robot. For those who don't know, this is obviously a bit of a wordplay on I, robot, which believe it or not, it's actually a book, a collection of short stories from the G himself, Mr. Science Fiction, Isaac Asimov. Most people will probably be more familiar with I, robot for a film featuring the world's biggest, most pathetic beta cuck of all time. Yes, I am talking to the embarrassment to masculinity that is Will Smith, great actor, terrible man, poor dude still yet to grow a pair, sad case. Anyway, I'm going to stop roasting that poor pathetic soul. We'll have to jump around a little bit, folks. So I'll dive into iRobot, the Asimov book, because there's a lot of hidden gems there that might relate to this event. But I just wanted to point this out for the few people that don't recognize we robot is a wordplay on iRobot. We, not I, meaning, <laughs> ready for it? More than one product, obviously, going to be featured at this event. Now, I did already spoil this a few months ago when I told you guys what would happen at this event. We're going to see more than one product, almost certainly. Now, I'm happy to say that will in fact be, certainly, my best guess, which is all it is, a compact, two-seat, two-door, extremely efficient vehicle, dedicated robotaxi, no steering wheel, no pedals, specifically designed to cater to 80 or so percent of people who today use an Uber, use a taxi. We've got a family call, order two or three of them, or alternatively, maybe get a higher density Tesla robo taxi van. More on that in a moment. So obviously there's going to be a compact two-door, two-seater type of vehicle. The whole point, low mass, low cost, fast to produce, meet most but not all needs for people who would typically want to use a robo taxi. It's also going to have plenty of storage because typically a lot of trips in taxis and Ubers require the carrying of a fuck ton of luggage, a lot of airport to and froms and so on. This is so obvious that I was able to tell everybody months before it was unveiled that that's what we're going to see. But in addition, this hint now with the Wii, very strongly suggesting that there will be multiple products, which I had speculated. If Tesla only makes one compact two seater, but they'll probably have more than one. The next obvious thing, in my opinion, will be a much higher density van. Now we've seen no evidence of this yet, other than Tesla's 2016 master plan, maybe even the 2006 one, time flies when you're just buying Tesla stock with every spare cent. Well, they talked about having a vehicle, essentially in every major form of terrestrial transport. In addition, they also talked about higher density urban transport. So if there is to be a second vehicle, to me, what would make the most sense would be a higher density vehicle, which I don't think a lot of investors will see coming because you think, well, that's not going to cater to that many people who typically would use an Uber or a taxi, right? But that's not the point. If Tesla has a two-seater to cater to most trips, they may not just be going after the taxi market. In fact, they're definitely not. But public transportation in general. Why would they do that? Their mission statement. They want to disrupt miles traveled with electric miles traveled. As I record this video right now and look out my window, let me count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... I can currently see nine diesel, oh wait, there's now 12. Three more just rolled up to the set of lights. You can't believe this. 12 diesel buses right now. Most of them probably fairly empty. It's not a peak hour. Imagine if Tesla starts building out their own fleet of higher density vans to transport people to start disrupting the likes of diesel powered buses. Now, I think it's possible there could also be an in-betweener, maybe a four or even a six seat sedan-esque SUV-esque robotaxi as well. If there were to be two products, it'd be the compact two-seater plus a high-density van. If there's three, the two-seater, the van, then in between, got a more conventional vehicle that could carry a full family. Whatever the case, there is no question we will see multiple dedicated robotaxi products at this event. 
Unless maybe the big plot twist is somehow Tesla's humanoid robots are more involved in their robotaxi rollout than expected. I don't know, maybe they're plugging charges into vehicles that roll up autonomously. And I guess the other way you could think about this is maybe they're just referring to a fuck ton of a single vehicle model on road. So we robot is just talking about a gigantic fleet of the exact same vehicle. Probably a low probability. I'm expecting multiple products. Now, to this image. Clearly, we are looking at an optical camera. This is how Tesla is solving computer vision. You need to actually see in order to perceive, plan and act in the real world. Photons in, controls out. It's the exact same thing that humans do. Slightly different hardware, but basically the same stuff. Our eyes are essentially a camera with a lens. Our brains are a neural network. If we zoom in, although first, HAL 9000 vibes, anyone? You all know what I'm talking about, right? This, definitely channeling some HAL 9000 vibes. So if we zoom in, we'll note a pattern of zeros and ones, the binary system. This lens looking out into the world, the zeros and ones clearly, unequivocally representing computer vision. Then of course, we have some embellishments around this image. Now, as a former graphic designer, I can tell you folks, there are three keys to being an excellent graphic designer. Actually, you don't even need to be excellent, but if you've got all these, you'll do okay. One, you need to be able to make stuff that looks nice. Two, you need to have a reason for the things that appear in your nice looking image or graphic. And three, you need to be able to explain why they're there and sell. If you can do all these three things well, you'll go far. If you can do only the selling part well, you'll still probably go far. So we're now entering rather speculative territory, but I noticed some of the graphics here we have a dashed line running around in a complete circle. And if we get in closer, we also have some solid lines, shorter, and some random dots. There's two here, there's three spread out here, two here, three clustered a bit closer here. Now, I don't know because I'm not the designer who produced this, but if this designer is pulling their weight, there's probably a reason for these choices and it's not just because they look pretty. So the question would be why? My strong suspicion, and maybe the designer at Tesla will, somebody works there, nudge them on the side and go, hey, this dickhead was speculating about why you did this. Please, can you confirm or deny? What I suspect the designer was attempting to convey here was the idea of different trips, different vehicles, different journeys of different lengths. And I see the dots and I think, hmm, is it just because they look nice or maybe is there a reason? I see down the bottom here, a single dot. And I think, ah, I think I know what this might be. They are representing an individual on a journey, on a trip in a robo taxi. This trip, one person. This trip, one person, one dot. This trip, two people. This trip, three people. This trip, three, three. And these, maybe, well, whatever. A bunch of individual trips. Is it possible that this designer was suggesting, possibly hinting at the idea that Tesla's robot taxis will at least be able to do trips for not only a single passenger and two passengers, but three? And the answer is, I don't fucking know. Rampant speculation, but hey, why not? While I'm going off the deep end, one final ridiculous thought. But you never know. This journey here, the dashed line, a complete circle. Is it possible? that this might be representing what I talked about earlier, possibly a high density vehicle to disrupt, say, public transportation, e.g. it's the exact same circuit and trip as opposed to every other embellishment here, which appears to be a journey to a destination, point A to point B, as opposed to a predetermined route that people could jump on and off at any point. Of course, I do not know. Just putting that out there. So I think it's worth taking the time to speculate yourself. What could we possibly be seeing at this event and what could the implications be? Two weeks from now, we're going to know the answer to all of these questions. And just a quick side note, in case you missed it, had an excellent, very long, wide-ranging and possibly controversial conversation slash TDS therapy session with Farzad and Hans recently. Full conversation available on YouTube Annex on Farzad's channel slash page. I'll repost the full conversation today, so anyone following me on X, just look for recent posts and you'll be able to watch it there. And now I wanted to jump back to iRobot. Let's read about iRobot. iRobot is a fix-up collection made up of science fiction short stories by American writer Isaac Asimov, who, by the way, if you guys don't know, this guy was so unbelievably prolific. You can't, this, look, over 400 books written or edited, okay? Just think about that. Mm -hmm. No, no, really, okay? Just imagine you're doing a book a fucking week for an entire year. You're good at math? 50 per year. That'll be a book a week. That's, that's absurd. What about a book a month? You're talking 12 per year. How in the fuck does anybody write or edit over 500 books in a human lifetime. Outrageous. Anyway, the stories originally appeared in the American magazines Super Science Stories and Astounding Science Fiction between 1940 and 1950, and were then collected into a 1950 publication. Now, listen carefully. The stories are woven together by a framing narrative in which the fictional Dr. Susan Calvin tells each story to a reporter 
who serves as a narrator in the 21st century. Although the stories can be read separately, they share a theme of the interaction of humans, robots, interesting, and morality. And when combined, they tell a larger story of Asimov's fictional history of robotics. Several of the stories feature the character of Dr. Calvin, chief robo-psychologist at US Robots and Mechanical Men, Inc., the major manufacturer of robots. Hmm. I'm going to say that again. Several of the stories feature a character who happens to work at the major, as in the biggest, manufacturer of robots. Upon their publication in this collection, Asimov wrote a framing sequence presenting the stories as Calvin's reminiscences during an interview with her about her life's work, chiefly concerned with aberrant behavior of robots and the use of robo-psychology to sort out what is happening in their positronic brain. The book also contains the short story in which Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics first appear which had a large influence on later science fiction and had impact on thought on ethics of artificial intelligence as well. Yeah, so just to be clear, this original work of fiction, The Three Laws of Robotics, had a very profound influence on real-world thoughts around the ethics of AI and robotics. Interesting, no? We robot. I'd love for you guys and girls to share your speculation below in the comments. Any hidden meaning? What do you expect you'll see at this event? How many products slash vehicles slash will we see the humanoid robot? What surprises could be coming? And just lastly, I noticed on the uh, Wikipedia article, popular culture references to iRobot. Obviously, this has had a profound impact. Special shout out to the episode referenced here from Star Trek Next Generation, iBorg, in which Geordie LaForge befriends a lost member of the Borg Collective and teaches it a sense of individuality and free will. Wikipedia claiming a citation is needed, uh, not necessary, they're referring to Hugh, can confirm this episode did in fact exist and it was epic. So, <laughs> there's probably a decent, actually no, I was going to say there's a decent chance that Tesla's Wii Robot event appears on this Wikipedia page, but then I remembered that Elon Bad and Wikipedia conforms to the one true narrative, so they're probably not going to make any adjustments and additions to this page unless anyone watching happens to have the editing capabilities on Wikipedia. Which was, by the way, once an excellent resource and now, eh, questionable. Who'd have thought a single graphic and the event title itself would contain so many juicy breadcrumbs? I look forward to finding out how off the mark I was or wasn't with some of these predictions. And by the way, I'm not joking. If anyone knows a designer at Tesla who whipped this up, I'd love to know what the fuck with the dots and the dashed line here. Was it just because it looks pretty or was there some meaning behind these? Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. And I haven't missed a daily video in more than three years. Must be a coincidence, right? Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer's been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. Plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. 
everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens. Now, AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend seriously, try Athletic Greens, you won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who, without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they were asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously, there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game has improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference. No more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people. Right? Wrong. Just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst could happen? Try it for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe... You might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.